2015, a crack unit of computer scientists stationed deep underground in a maximum security bunker began work on a highly classified project. After successfully developing an early prototype of the OpenAI software, they were commissioned to test its capabilities via the creation of a public YouTube channel. If they were able to fool the public into believing it was man-made, the software would be deemed a success. This gave rise to the Kujo Painting Project. From day one, this channel has been entirely created with AI technologies. Everything, including the video footage, audio, video topics, thumbnails, and even the painted miniatures themselves, have all been artificially generated using hyper-complex AI algorithms. Initially, the capabilities of the software were, relative to today, quite rudimentary. Our system would accept extremely complex inputs while managing to output somewhat believable footage. But often the video quality would be subpar and in the early days we had a lot of trouble generating clean audio files especially. They were often filled with static and terrible distortion. Many videos had to be deleted as even after hours of careful filtering they were simply unlistenable. Of the videos we were able to salvage, the AI would often generate strange sequences and make editing choices that were hard to justify. For example, there was a lengthy period where Kujo decided to cover up two thirds of the screen with strange and pointless sidebars, only to end every video with a glacially slow credit scroll, which often lasted longer than the content of the video itself. Many in our team thought that we were sunk as no human would make such decisions, but surprisingly the public continued to go along with it. In fact, inexplicably, many of the videos from this era became the most viewed and well liked. We also had difficulty when the bot would linger for long periods of time on basic concepts. For example, in the first video made public, Kujo rambled incoherently about applying a green base coat for over 8 minutes. However, in time, the bot was able to use our neural net learning algorithms to gradually condense their descriptions, making them a lot less chaotic and more concise. At the start of the project, our voice generation tools were at a very early stage of development. We really struggled to modulate a natural cadence and relatable accent. Despite our best efforts, Kujo's output remained consistently strange and inscrutable. Luckily, we were able to sidestep public suspicion by simply telling people that he was from Scotland. To complicate matters further, even though our technology continued to improve, we were unable to apply it to Kujo's voice, as any radical change would have aroused too much suspicion. In order to maintain the illusion, we were left with no choice but to continue using an older version of the software. We were however able to clean up the general sound quality and justify the improvement by telling viewers Kujo had purchased a new microphone setup. The introduction of Angus was an unexpected surprise. He appeared on Christmas Day 2017. For reasons that are still unclear, the Kujo bot decided to produce a bizarre ASMR video hosted by what he called his cousin from Aberdeen. This was an odd glitch, as the entity known as Angus clearly had a strong Glaswegian accent. Oh, uh, hello! I say hello, ho! Hello, out here! Is this thing on? An unfortunate anomaly that luckily no one noticed. Angus would appear briefly in numerous videos from that point on. Many of those he featured in were actually never published, as they broke every hate speech law in multiple countries. Several of our operatives required extensive counselling to deal with the trauma of reviewing them. In one infamous video, Angus laid out his manifesto for world domination. The video was close to 10 hours long, but the main thrust seemed to involve the building of a huge number of trebuchets, into which he proposed loading a bizarre combination of sheep and haggis. These deviations were concerning, but we thought our work important and so we carried on. 
Although we had covered huge ground by fronting the channel with a simple avatar, management believed that the Kujo painting project needed a face to make it more relatable to the audience. However, at the time, our face generation technology, while still good, was still in its infancy and the AI struggled with the task. After many failed attempts, we opted to show the generated face very briefly as a compromise. Unfortunately, these were often disturbing and did not resemble a human face at all. We tried different approaches, including adjusting various parameters, but nothing seemed to work. To mitigate the issue, we decided to render in grayscale. This seemed to offer a slight improvement. It also reduced the system load, allowing us to focus on improving other aspects of the channel. After the successful release of sophisticated AI to the general public, our team was thrilled. We'd been working on the technology for years and it was amazing to see it being used by people all over the world. However, this also meant that we were suddenly swamped with new projects and responsibilities and had to put the Kujo painting project on hold. For several months, we were redeployed to work on general development, which was exciting but also frustrating. We missed working on the channel and were eager to get back to it as soon as possible. Thankfully, some higher ups at our organisation eventually gave us the all clear to resume work on the project. We are excited to see what we can create going forward with this powerful technology and hope you stay with us as we continue our journey through the miniature painting wilderness.